Hi, my name's Ryan. Thanks for joining me. I'm starting my first episode of my first ever podcast. Ah, and I'm finally call I'm fondly calling it Stitch Drop. Uh, I'm working title. I don't know if I'm going to end up sticking with it, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, you can find me just about everywhere as Rebo95, R-E-E-B-O-9-5. I'm on Ravelry, I'm on uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, I also have a blog called Knitting Nowhere, that's with two Ks, which I've been told is not too cute, so I don't know if that title's going to be sticking either. Um, I've been knitting since I was... oh. I could tell you I'd been knitting since I was five, but my mom would call me a liar. She tried to teach me when I was really young, and it really didn't stick until I was about in college when I returned to it. But before that, I did learn how to crochet. I've done some needlepoint, um, all sorts of different fiber crafts. I do not yet know how to spin, but I will be correcting that soon, I hope. Um, I went to school as an art major, first fine art, then studio art, which yes, there is a difference, and then art history. So I have a pretty big background in creating things and trying to be creative, uh, but that's not what I focus on anymore. So I do know how to paint and sculpt and scrapbook and every creative outlet you could possibly think of, and knitting finally became my niche. So I'm hoping to become an knitwear designer. I'm working to attain that goal by working with my local yarn store, uh, and they provide a, a series of classes. Uh, my local yarn store is actually Webb's, the largest yarn store in America, and I, have, I am not taking any kind of endorsement in any way to say this, but I love them, and yes, I do know how lucky I am to have them as my local yarn store. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> you may hear something or see the... the the camera jiggle a little bit. I have two cute, adorable, but obnoxious little cats, Zelda and Sheik, and one of them is chasing a coin around the tripod right now, so I apologize. If they make an appearance on the podcast, that's cool. I'm not going to force them to, but if they show up, that's what's going on, so I'm sorry about that. But I was saying, my local yarn store, um, it is Webs. I'm part of their expert knitting program currently, so I'm taking classes to learn how to design and create my own sweater from my own measurements. So that includes taking a whole bunch of different classes about how to knit, how to uh, design a pattern, how to knit different garments or uh, take different measurements, uh, all sorts of things. So I'm learning a whole bunch of skills even though I've been knitting for a little while. Um, I did learn how to knit when I was 25. I am 32 now, so that's, what, seven years? And it's kind of a trial by fire. I hate stockinette. I, stockinette scarves are the bane of my existence. I will never make a Harry Potter scarf, no matter how much I love them and I think they're great and I want to make one. I would probably abandon it after yay much, so that's not going to happen anytime soon. But my first projects that I uh, worked on were a cable knit scarf, which actually maybe I'll grab it because I think it's right over there. And I also made a bolero for myself and those were my first two projects. I'm sorry, the cat kicked the tripod again so I'm probably going to edit that out. Um, so I really like to push myself. I'm always learning all of the time. I, I try to absorb as much as I possibly can. And so now this podcast is just one more avenue for me to get out there and do something new and try something different. So thanks for coming and checking me out. Um, I know most other podcasters follow a very formulaic pattern. They usually introduce themselves. I will try to remember to do that every single time. Um, I do not have much in the way of stash acquisitions. I don't have a very large staff. I don't have a very large stash. I tend to be a very monogamous knitter, so I don't pick up a lot of different projects. I usually knit those projects all the way through. Stop. Stop. Come here. Or don't. No, you're psychotic right now. Stop. Ugh. I usually like to knit projects all the way through before I start another one. I'll sometimes have two or three on the needles. I can knit on multiple projects, but I just don't usually do it for whatever reason. So I don't build a huge stash. I usually, what I have left is just like a skein of this and a skein of that from projects previously, and I'm trying to use up a lot of that in taking my classes. 
so I don't buy a lot of yarn. And to be quite frank, I don't have a lot of money to be buying a lot of yarn. So that probably won't be a huge exciting thing for you, but I do work on a lot of projects and um, I didn't realize until recently that I knit kind of fast. Um, I do watch the Knitting Expat with uh, Nina in Bahrain and I'm nowhere close to her. <laughs> I've seen Stephanie Pearl McPhee videos too of her knitting and I'm, I'm nothing like that, but I do evidently knit faster than your average knitter. Uh, which has actually helped in me taking so many classes at the same time. This uh, expert knitter class that I'm in usually takes an average of three years for people to finish, and I'm trying to do it in one. Um, after this trimester, I will be more than halfway through, and I, I've been handling it so pretty well so far. So, um, pretty fast knitter. So hopefully I'll make enough pro progress that I'll have projects for you guys to look at. Um, and then maybe that's where I should start today. The project that I'm working on right now is a Nora Gone sweater. Uh, it came out, I believe, last fall. It's the chain link tunic um, that was normally done in the Brooklyn Tweed loft. I'm hoping that shows up. Um, and if it doesn't, then I'll just, I'll put a picture of the sweater there so that you guys can see it. Um, uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Rebo95, so you can always check out my project pages. I'm pretty avid about putting my stuff on there. Um, and I, I do have a Ravelry group set up for this podcast. I haven't done anything with it yet because this is my first episode, so I haven't really, on top of learning how to film a podcast and edit and do all of the things that are involved in that, I'm going to have to learn how to run a Ravelry group. So please, please be patient with me. But this is my sweater. Oh, sorry. I've got actually, there's a couple of um, stitch keepers on here right now and they're, they're just getting a little, a little twisted. So I'm, I'm hoping you can see the beautiful texture on this. It is a very interesting, almost like a, like a swancho. I hate when people mix words like that, but there's just no other way to, to to describe it. The chain link tunic is like, it's almost like a poncho with sleeves. It's beautiful. I've been lusting after this sweater for over a year now. And now that I'm in between trimesters uh, with the knitting program, uh, the next classes won't start until June. So I've been taking some time to work on the projects that I've kind of been drooling over in the last six months or so. Um, so this has been my big one. I made, actually, I got a couple of inches done over the last couple days. This, the Progress Keeper, which I don't usually use. I actually just started this because, uh, there's multiple repeats and I wanted to keep track of how many repeats. I've also started using a stitch counter for the first time in my life ever to count my repeats, but I didn't trust myself to remember to turn the little number. So I put the progress keeper there so figuring I could count the repeats from the progress uh, keeper and we'll see what works best and then whatever I end up sticking with I'll use in future projects. So there's one. I really hope that that color, I really hope that that color comes out for you. Uh, we've had some really crappy weather here. I live in western Massachusetts and it's been raining straight for the last week. It was actually raining this morning and it was really overcast and really ugly so I was like, oh, I'm never going to get this this episode shot. But then all of a sudden the skies opened up and it turned beautiful and I'm actually I'm filming from my bedroom right now because it gets the best light in the house on this side. I don't have a cute, you know, adorable little backdrop for you so you're probably seeing my ugly bed and my pretty picture over my bed but it was the best place for me to be able to photograph my knitting projects. So I hope I'll have a, a more interesting scene. So if you decide that you're going to block me out, <laughs> you can at least look at what's behind me. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm taping here today, but I was working on this this morning. I got a couple of inches done and then decided it's a good day to, um, to record this. I did not mention it's May 8th today. It is one of my closest friend's birthday today, so happy birthday, Corey. I got you on the internet. Um, but it's also Mother's Day, and my mother's, um, 
<laughs> I'm a very extended family. Um, all of my mother-like relatives are busy or have other things going on. So I'm by myself today until my husband comes home from work. So it kind of was the perfect day to do this. So happy Mom's Day to all you moms out there. Happy Mom's Day to you. Um, another project that I've been working on. Um, I joined a sock knitting group and I apologize I'm not looking at my camera because I have all of my stuff on Ravelry on my nook. I love my nook. Like knitter's best friend. You can put patterns on this thing. You can get Ravelry on this thing. I started following blogs. I love this thing. It's like my knitting uber tool. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, I knew I wasn't going to remember everything so I was going to have to have it available. But I did join a sock knitting group this year. I am one of those crafters who likes to craft for Christmas and I always wait until Thanksgiving and they go, oh crap, I don't have anything done and I'm racing and not enjoying Christmas because I'm stressing out and I used to love Christmas and now I hate Christmas because it sneaks up on me every year. So this year I decided I was going to join a sock knitting group and um, just to try to encourage me to knit a pair of socks a, a month. So that way I would have probably 90% of my Christmas list done. Like I said, I've got a really big extended family, so that's a lot of people to shop for. Um, so if I make a pair of socks a month, then theoretically I would have 12 pairs of socks to give away for Christmas. The biggest problem with that is, is that I keep making socks for myself. That's not how this was supposed to happen. I think I have one pair of socks to gift to somebody this year, so... We'll save that for a future podcast. So I joined the Everlasting Sock Challenge. It goes all year long, and every month there is a different challenge. Uh, you can find this group on Ravelry. Um, and they set different, um, different goals and challenges every month, and usually there's multiple. So if you don't like one challenge, there's probably another one you can fill. And if you don't like any of the challenges, you can still comment on everybody else's work or you can submit your own socks and share your progress with everybody and just say, you know, I don't want any prizes or anything. The prizes are donated by the people in the group, so it's not like, you know, we're in this to get stuff. It's just to share and to, you know, to give and to, you know, share our, our work. So I'm working on those and I've done, let's see, it may just started. I've done six pairs of socks so far this year. And I always end up with these little nubs and everybody has been working on like sock yarn blankets, uh, specifically the Cozy Memories blankets. I see everybody working on them and they're beautiful and they're gorgeous and don't get me wrong, but I don't want to make one. <laughs> I really don't want to make one. Mitered squares are not really my thing um, and I don't knit enough socks that it's going to make a lot of progress anytime soon. What I actually was doing, I took a Fair Isle class a couple months ago, and it had been a really long time. I started knitting as a thrower, like I would throw my yarn around the needle every time I made a stitch. Then a few years ago, everybody was talking about knitting Continental, because it's so much quicker. And it was for me, and I, I'm both a process and a product knitter, so I decided I was going to switch, and I taught myself to knit Continentally. And I do need a lot faster now, but then when I took this Fair Isle class, it had been several years since I threw or knit English style. So I needed to learn how to hold the yarn in my right hand again. I am right handed, but I now naturally hold it in my left. So I started a 10 stitch blanket and it's, it looks so bad. I'm sorry, but this is my 10 stitch blanket. I'll cover my face. So hopefully the camera will focus on it. Um, and I'm using what's left of my little nubs of sock yarn to work on the blanket. And literally, you start in the middle, you knit 10 stitches. Where is the middle? I think it's here? No, that's not it. Maybe it's right here. It's this little blue swatch between the purple and the orange and the yellow. Um, and you knit 10 stitches until you get to the corner. Then you work a mitered corner. Yeah, still not my thing. But... Then you work 10 more stitches and you just kind of go around in a spiral until it gets bigger and bigger. Um, I don't know what this thing in the middle is happening. I think because I keep switching back and forth between my two hands now. Um, it, it really helped to remember how to 
throw my yarn and now I'm kind of trying to become more of a flicker so that it's still really quick but I've kind of got the hang of knitting English so I've been switching back and forth between my two hands and now it's got this weird pucker in the middle and I think it's because my tension is different on my two different hands so that's something I'm gonna have to work on and you can even kind of see it and I hope this focus is okay in this rainbow stripe here like it starts out wide here and that's where I was knitting continental and then when it got super tight up here I had switched to English so obviously I've got some gauge issues there normally my gauge is humongous I go down approximately two needle sizes on any project that I do just because I knit so loosely but I guess that's not the case when I'm holding it in my right hand um, people like to talk about all of the supplies that they're using to create these things. Um, these are Knitter's Pride Cubics double pointed needles. They come in sets of five. I learned how to knit on sets of four double pointed needles. Um, I don't know when five became the norm, but all of a sudden everybody's got five, so I have five. Uh, they are size 1.5. The size is etched into these, which I thought was going to be super useful, but I also bought a pair of, um, actually a whole set of, what do they call them, interchangeable needles, and the etching eventually, as your hand wears them, it gets fainter and fainter, at least on those. It hasn't happened on the, on the Cubics yet, and these are the, um, the Cubics are the ones that are, like, square, um, a lot of people get upset because they think that the square metal needles are going to hurt your hands and they're not so bad. I think they did a little bit when I first started using them, but I use metal needles almost exclusively. I love metal needles. Um, I like how the yarn just slides right off of them. So unless I'm working with something like bamboo that's extra slippery, I will usually work with metal needles. Um, but the, it, the etching hasn't worn off on these yet. It's still really, really clear. Uh, I really do enjoy them for socks. They're a good size, the one 1.5. Uh, that's US. I don't use the metric system. <laughs> so that's 2.5 millimeters. Um, and I keep them in this handy dandy little uh, point protector, needle keeper. I, I've heard them called so many different things, which I actually won in a giveaway from the Knitting X Pack podcast. So thank you, Mina. I use this all the time. Um, I do like metal needles. That's actually what I'm using for my chain link sweater too, is that interchangeable set. This is the Nova, interchangeable Nova needles from Knit Picks. Knit Picks? Oh God, if I'm saying that wrong. I remember, it's Knitter's Pride. I'm such a jerk. I'm sorry. Knitter's Pride needles, not Knit Picks. Knit Picks does yarn and stuff. Okay. So my Knitter's Pride needles. Um, and I love them. I really, really love them. They are super comfortable as far as I'm concerned. I feel like the cords could be a little more flexible, but once you use them a couple of times, they kind of loosen up a little bit. Um, I don't really have problems with the joints at all. I, I like the joints. They seem smooth enough for me. I did buy a pair of carbons because everybody had been talking about them, so I got double-pointed needles, and I feel like... The caps are metal, and then the carbon, whatever they use, like the graphite shafts across the middle, um, are what are kind of sticky, and I like how those feel, but I feel like they, they kind of grip the yarn on the edges. They're not quite smooth, and there's a little bit of a seam there, but I don't get that with the cords at all, and they the cords are interchangeable across all of their needles, which I really appreciate. I didn't expect that was going to happen. Um, um, so I love them. I've never had any problems with them. I continue to use them. They've started to make the cords color-coded now, which is kind of helpful. I'm not going to remember what cords are what size anyway, but it's just good to know, like, oh, I know my red one is bigger than my orange one, so maybe I should switch to the red one. I know what I'm looking for instead of the ones that came with the set, which are all black. So that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, I just finished a pair of socks, which I'll just, I'll show on a later podcast to keep things short. Uh, but I haven't picked up a new set yet. I'm actually thinking about designing my own because I finally know how to make socks. Um, and I've had this stitch pattern kind of stuck in my head for a while. So I really want to get that out and I'm working out the logistics of it, but I should start those soon. I've got some yarn coming in the mail that I think will be helpful. Uh, and that are 
is going to look really good with that pattern. So um, within the next couple of days. So maybe you'll see it next time. If there is next time. One stitch or one yarn acquisition that I do have, however, um, I got a notification saying that there was going to be a yarn update from Junk Yarn, and I had had my eye on the Diana colorway, which is inspired by, I I thought I read it, but I couldn't find it again. It's in, so I apologize, Kemper, if I'm screwing this up, but it's inspired by Wonder Woman, and I am a freak about Wonder Woman. I totally love her, and I think the colorway was inspired by her invisible plane which is like the coolest idea I have ever heard of. So kudos to you, Kemper. And it came in the mail yesterday. See if you can get some of that beautifulness. I really hope it works because I have no way of seeing if my camera is actually focusing on this right now, so I apologize. But it's, it's kind of an off-white, like a grayish white and it has splatters of obviously black. I'm sure you can see that. And then there's little flecks of like a neon or sky blue color. And if you've ever seen Wonder Woman's Invisible Plane, it's always like blue outlined in more blue and she's just kind of floating in the middle of it. It's, it's perfect. It's amazing. I'm trying to decide what to make with it. I intended to make socks and I thought about buying a second one and I just, my budget wasn't going to allow for it but I wanted to. So I just got the one. I might get some more later if she posts some more, um, if she's making more in this colorway. But I'm thinking it's so beautiful, I don't want it to be on my feet, even though I try to show off my socks whenever I can. Um, I, I kind of want to make a cowl out of it. I'm not giving you the details, I apologize. This is on her smooth sock base, which is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. It's... 463 yards. I'm sorry. The the four looked like a one for a second and I I almost panicked. <laughs> 463 yards, which is pretty substantial. Um, and note to you, I have humongous feet. Everybody complains about making guys socks, but I have guy size feet. They're size 12. Gasp. Which um, a, a U.S. women's 12 is a U.S. 10 in men's and that's like the average shoe size for men or something so me and my husband actually have the same size feet so when people complain about it I'm like what's the big deal they're just a little bit longer but this will make a good size pair of socks enough that they will come up over like my motorcycle style boots so I could make socks out of them or I might make a beautiful cowl so that everybody will look at it because I love when people look at my knitting and say stuff about it who doesn't you know this is why we do it so we can show it off so, trying to decide what to do with that. Um, so that's coming. Um, one more step in my fight for ultimate fiber domination is I want to kind of make stitch markers. I want to learn every aspect of making things and ultimately I would like to open some kind of Etsy store or, you know, sell them some other way. So I've kind of been collecting beads and, um... I, I don't know, I just got drawn to these little skulls, which I thought were really amazing. They reminded me of the Terminator. Why anybody, I, I, yeah, I think they're amazing, but I got these little skulls and they're kind of, here, let's, they're kind of awesome, but I haven't figured out how I'm going to make them into stitch markers yet. And they're actually really heavy. So I don't know how that's going to work out. And I got some pretty hefty skull and crossbones. Let's try this again. Hefty skull and crossbones for like project keepers to go with them. And uh, I think that's going to be my first, my first dab. And they're going to be for me because then, you know, if they suck, then I don't care. It's fine. Um, and I was thinking, who's going to get skulls anyway? Um, I'm always watching Nathan Taylor's podcast, Sockmetician. If you haven't seen that, check it out. He's awesome. Nathan, you're awesome. If you get to, if you ever see this, you're amazing. He's got this energy and charisma that's just magnetic. And he kind of has that friendly next door philosophy with his one stitch at a time. It just kind of reminds me of Mr. Rogers. I don't know if he knows who that is, but it's, it's comforting and it's nice. And I, I love watching it, but he's always talking about stuff for the boys, things that are not 
um, not super feminine so that they can be unisex. And he was like, I remember the first time he said it, he said something to the effect of, I don't want it all to be skulls and cars and things like that because not all boys like that either. And so I, I think of this and I'm like, oh, it's overkill. But then I see other podcasters like the Yarngasm. Um, I'm so sorry. Your name is escaping me. And I'm totally name dropping this whole time anyway. Um, her and I believe it's Gabby from the Once Upon a Corgi podcast both really love skulls. I really love skulls. So forget the boys. Like, skulls can be feminine too. So that's going to be mine. Um, and I, I just picked up a whole bunch of really interesting beads for sale at, um, at Michael's because they were on sale. And we'll see what I can make out of them. Maybe I can get something really cool. And maybe it'll go like my scrapbooking did and it just won't happen. Whatever. So... I think that's everything I have to show. I'm kind of going to wrap things up. I hope that you enjoyed looking at my projects. I hope I'll have a little nicer backdrop for you next time, but this just happened to be the best light in my house at the moment. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you later.